Hello everybody, Dark Phoenix Ninja 92 here, and welcome to my brand new Let's Play of Tyranny. Oh man, I am so excited to play this game. I've been sort of loosely following the news and dev diaries and stuff on this since the announcement of it first dropped. And this game is so awesome. I, I, from what I can tell, this is just the kind of thing I love. And to those of you who have played Pillars of Eternity, this is the same type of thing. It's a top-down RPG in the style of Baldur's Gate. But Tyranny takes place in an entirely different universe. And there's one very, very big twist that will become obvious very early on in the story, but I'll let you see that for yourself. First of all, <clears throat> there's a few things I want to bring up. Firstly, I am recording this on the day this game is released. So, <clears throat> there, I'm going to have to be very clear on this. Absolutely no spoilers. Because this game is one I really want to experience the story for myself and not have it spoiled. So, if you put something in the comments saying, Oh, this happens at this point in the story because you've happened to get further in it than I have. If you do something like that, I will ban you. No ifs, ands, or buts. Spoilers are an immediate ban. So, now that we've gotten that out of the way... I am going to be starting to be uploading this pretty much right away. Despite me having a rather significant number of Let's Plays going on at the moment, I really want to play Tyranny. So, I'm just going to play it and fuck anything that... And if this causes problems, fuck them. I don't care. I want to play Tyranny, so I'll play Tyranny. Now, let's get started. First of all... We are going to play on normal difficulty. I could play on hard because I spent like maybe 30 hours total playing Boulder's Gate and Pillars of Eternity combined. But, I'm not suicidal. And seeing as I'm generally pretty bad at games, I'm going to stick it on normal for now. The two modes we have are Expert Mode and Trial of Iron. Trial of Iron is basically Iron Man, and Expert Mode turns off all the tips. Sorry about that, everyone. I had to go into the settings real quick to change some stuff. So, I'm just going to cut that bit out, since it's not very interesting. And, let's get into the game. I am looking so much. I am really looking forward to being able to play Tyranny and experience it alongside you. And I hope you enjoy this as much as I will. Let's get started.
for over 400 years. The armies of Kairos the Overlord have swept across the known world. All who stood against them fell before their might. Even the Archons, women and men of immense power, were forced to kneel, chained to the Overlord's will. Now Kairos's final conquest has come to our corner of the world, and two of the Overlord's armies compete for the honor of taking our lands. The elite disfavored, and the teeming horde of the Scarlet Chorus. The voices of Narad, spymaster and archon of secrets, guides the fierce and undisciplined masses of the Scarlet Chorus. With each battle, the Scarlet Chorus grows stronger as the defeated are given a simple choice. Serve or die. Graven Ash, Archon of War and the Overlord's most loyal general, leads the disfavored. Though small in number, Kairos' ironclad legion has never met true defeat in open battle. Watching over the two generals is Tunan, the Adjudicator. Archon of Justice, eldest of Kairos' minions. Tunan brings Kairos' laws to newly conquered lands. Aided by the Fate Binders, judges and executioners of the Overlord's laws. You were among the youngest of the court of Fate Binders when Kairos' armies came to our lands. How could we have known that the fate of thousands would rest in your hands? And that is the setup for Tyranny. It basically takes every other traditional fantasy universe and turns it on its head. Because in Tyranny, evil won. That's right, you are in basically Harry Potter in medieval fantasy land if Voldemort had won. Which is a very interesting way to do things. And I quite like it. It's an interesting twist. And I'm going to very much enjoy playing through it. Now we have character creation. So, I'm going to be playing as a dude. going to read all the text since this is new to me. In the Northern Empire where you were born, men enjoy equal protections under the laws of the Overlord Kairos. In the southern lands of the Tears, only men may own the captain's ships, but real estate is restricted to women. Men may lease, but the ownership of the land of the Tears always passes to eldest daughter sons enter their father's profession, either mid teens those without a profession or family lands to work, and find purpose by pledging service to one of the Overlord's mighty archons. Criminals, derelicts, and others are often conscripted into the armies of the archons. If a child cannot forge his own skein, he will certainly find one in battle. I don't actually know what a skein is, by the way, but I'm sure we'll find out, and this is a very nice way to do things. It gives you some lore about Kairos. So I am going to read this, and you should expect this first session to be a very long one, and since I'll be getting into things and going over the basics. Kairos is a name out of legend. For centuries, the Overlord has consolidated power, sending vast armies to swallow entire realms. The most powerful mystic the world has ever seen, Kairos can issue edicts, magical proclamations that level cities, spread pox, sunder the lands, or change the course of seasons. The Archons, the masters of the 
magic throughout the known world bow to Kairos. And the Overlord readily destroys any Archons unwilling to kneel. These sorceresses and madmen lead the Overlord's armies in near endless conquest. As the realms of the known world fall to the Overlord, these captured territories are divvied up amongst the Archons to manage, able to deliver suffering and woe to every corner of Teratus without leaving the capital. Few have seen the Overlord in person, but though Kairos' name is the single most recognized name in the world, only the Archons can say what the Overlord looks like. And I'm assuming Teratus is the name of the world, or perhaps the continent, but I don't actually know. Now, next. And let's close this. Uh, we do this customization. It's not especially important since this is from a top-down perspective and we will not see our character all that much, but I'm going to mess with it a little anyhow. So, let's see. I like that appearance, I think, but let's look through the others. I'm thinking either this one or this one. We'll see what matches the beard I'm going to give him best. Because we need to have an epic beard, it's a requirement. Actually, no, I'll go with just a goatee, and I think I'm fine with this, but... Yeah. Well, not quite a goatee, but yeah, we're gonna go with this. But now we need to pick our voice. On the lookout. I got it. Look here. Heads up, we have company. I like that voice. Now, for a tattoo. Or a birthmark, or whatever this is. Two, I think.
here. I mean, it's not exactly us, and there's no beard for one thing, but I'm okay with it. I'm never too bothered by the portrait, to be honest. Now we have our history of how we joined Kairos' army. So, how did we end up in the Overlord's service? I don't think we want to be a pit fighter, which is basically just a slave. Hunter. Let's see. Hmm. I'll read the one that I'm going to pick, but I'm not going to read all of these. Guild Apprentice? No. I'm going to go with this. We are a noble scion. Born to noble parents, you were groomed for leadership. Your youth spent on letters, history, rhetoric, and other matters of culture and statecraft. Though you had wealth and creature comforts, you were expected to grow up quickly and bear the honor of shepherding others through prosperity and war. When your parents came under accusation of sedition, you were sent to the court of Tunon, Archon of Justice, to defend your family's actions. Your parents were found guilty, their sentence the dissolution of the treasonous estate. Eloquently pleading your own ignorance on your family's actions, you negotiated your most important deal yet, immunity from the crimes of your family for the simple cost of swearing fealty to the Archon himself. Despite the unwilling induction, your education and savvy made you a valuable addition to the Archon's cadre of enforcers. And so long as you remain in good standing, your family just might be allowed to live. So, we're from a noble family, but our family screwed up, and we ended up being a fate binder as a result of that. I kind of like that whole thing. It's a really interesting way to go from being a noble to a fate binder, I think. Now, what kind of combat training did we receive primarily? That's the thing. I think we received training in dual wielding. Wielding two weapons. That's my favorite type of combat in the game. I love dual wielding. Is this something about going in with two weapons and actually slicing my opponent? have Slice, a carefully placed attack that attempts to open a major artery, leaving the target bleeding, and Flurry of Blows, a major double attack on your target. I think I'm going with Slice, because the kind of character I think I want to go with is 
Rather than just being all direct attacks and we try to murder people with brute strength, we are going to be the type of character that I so enjoy playing, where we avoid our enemy where they're strong and hit them where they're weak. We're basically playing a rogue, where we dance around their direct attacks and just hit them in their soft spots. So, next one. Our secondary expertise. Wait, we can have our secondary also be dual wielding. I think I'm gonna do that actually. We'll just focus on dual wielding for our weapon style. Which gives us Flurry of Blows as the second one. Well, that was easy enough. And now we have our character colors and banner to select. I think black and blue for our character colors. It's nice and simple, but I rather like it. As for the banner... Hmm, let's see here. This symbol, there's something about it I like. I just think it's really cool. Sort of like a, some sort of flying demonic creature type thing. Red on white. Banner can be dark blue. Actually, no, that doesn't make it appear very well. We'll make the banner white and our symbol red, like that. I just think it looks really cool. There's no other reason I'm doing that than just because it looks cool. But anyways, let's move on. And our character's name. Unlike most other times, I had actually bothered to think ahead. Though in my case, think ahead just means I hit the randomly generate button on a random number generator until I found something I liked. And our character is going to be Tiberius. And why Tiberius? Well, I'm a fan of Roman history and I think it's a really cool name. No other reason than that. And I haven't mentioned this before since starting out here, but the music in the music here is absolutely bloody epic. I love it. I just cannot get enough of this soundtrack. Like, if I can, I'm going to get a copy of this soundtrack and put it in my personal music library. It's that good. But we have eight points available, and the game recommends finesse and quickness. up to 15 finesse, 12 and quickness, and we have one more point. I'm going to put our last point into resolve. 
enduring challenges and stuff it seems like the kind of thing that would be very useful weapon skills forty five and dual wheels thirty and subterfuge thirty five and parry thirty five in athletics twenty five in dodge that would be it. And how do we want to continue? Selecting the conquest option will allow you to play through Kairos' Conquest of the Tears, choosing how your character was involved in the invasion. This gives you the most control over the starting state of the game, and how other factions will react to your character. And yeah, we're gonna play through the conquest. But one thing I haven't mentioned yet is what kind of character Tiberius is going to be. Because as I, I said, tyranny takes place in a world where evil won, so we can't be just a straight up good guy with some flaws that I'd like to play normally. I don't think that would work out. So the kind of character we're going to be is, well, let's put it this way, he's not a nice person, but he's not absolutely evil. He is a pragmatist. He tries to minimize losses of life because life is a resource and he doesn't like to waste things. He is extremely frugal. He'll be an asshole to people when it's necessary, but he won't be cruel for cruelty's sake. He will be cruel to people if it serves a purpose and will accomplish his goal. But he won't be a dick to someone just because he can. That's the kind of general character outline I'm going for here. I'm trying to be pretty vague with what kind of character he'll be because if I'm too specific and something happens in the game that prevents me from doing something that's in his character, I don't want to have to go out of character to continue. So I'm deliberately trying to be a little vague. So, let's hit next and experience Kairos' Conquest of the Tears. All the world has fallen to Kairos. And now the Overlord's eye is on the Tears, our home. The last corner of the world free of Kairos' reign. Two armies. The Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus march south from the Northern Empire, the last realm to fall to Kairos a century prior. In the early days of 428, Kairos' armies arrive at the Gates of Judgment, the mountainous border that we Tearsmen so long believed unassailable. Unable to agree on a unified plan of defense, the various leaders of the Tears sit and wait for each other to deal with the Conquerors. Until it's too late. Let that be a lesson to you people. When the evil overlord comes knocking, don't bitch at each other. Come up with an actual plan. But yes, we are now in the Tears and will be directly involved in conquering it. A very different scenario to what you would usually get in this kind of game, and I rather like it. Conquest. During the conquest, you will decide your character's actions during Kairos' invasion of the Tears, shaping the world through which you will adventure over the course of the game. Each choice you make affects your character and how major factions of the Tears respond to you. Your decisions matter. Choose wisely. The conquest has begun. The Bastard City. 
the bastard city stood on the northern border between Kairos' empire and the Tears, built upon a natural harbor at the crossroads between realms. The city was a nexus of commerce. To the Tears, it was the center of all wealth. To a northerner, it was little more than a backwater trading post. Its symbolic status as a gateway to the continent made it a natural first target in Kairos' military conquest. Circumstances were ideal for you to prove your worth as a soldier in Kairos' armies. Taking this city would send a message to the rest of the Tears, Kairos' will is insurmountable. But we have a chance to learn a little more about the bastard city, and I'm going to take that chance. Named for its position between two realms, the Northern Empire and the Southern Tears, the Bastard City and its surrounding lands, known as the Bastard Tear, is a melting pot of cultures and a place of commerce and intrigue. The Tearsmen of the South view the Bastard City as a place of wealth and excess, but to the people of the Northern Empire, the Bastard City is little more than a sprawling slum. Tudon the Adjudicator established his court in the Bastard City. From this foothold in the Tears, he and his court of Fatebinders imposed Kairos' laws on, upon the conquered land. And now we have some choices to make on how we're going to sail the city. We have the Gates of Judgment basically launch a direct assault. I don't think that's Tiberius' style. We're more of a rogue type character, so... Infiltration... I know what I'm going to do. History would remember the Gates of Judgment as the first battle of the conquest, but the real combat unfolded with advanced units of both armies preparing for the coming war. The disfavored and scarlet chorus each had a plan to infiltrate the capital city. Which army did you join? And the way this works is you can pick one of these and get a little more of a background info on it, and we have to side with one faction. But first, I will read about both the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus. The Disfavored are disciplined and battle-hardened soldiers, the elite legion in Kairos' army. They spearheaded the conquest of the Younger Realms, finding themselves always outnumbered but never outclassed. Led by the steadfast and dutiful Graven Ash, and they follow with obsessive devotion. They are always committed to imposing their interpretation of order upon the relative lawlessness of the Tears. The Legion only tolerates Northerners in their ranks, priding themselves on their high standards and cultural purity. They sound like an interesting bunch. The whole quantity whole quality over quantity thing and they even with the whole cultural purity thing which makes them sound like they'd kind of be snobs at first glance I'm kind of inclined to like them more than the Scarlet Chorus little more than a gang of thugs and captive slaves just sheer numbers over an enemy with brute forces they typically suffer tremendous losses only to swell in the aftermath when enemies and prisoners are given the opportunity to join or die. But here we are going to aid the disfavored. Capture a border garrison and get ourselves a morale boost and diminish the confidence of the enemy. Rather than the Scarlet Chorus, who just seem to want to rage, raid, pillage, and plunder. Which Tiberius is not a fan of, because he doesn't see it as necessary right now. 
So we will side with the disfavored. The Earthbound scouts identified a modest border defense and collaborated on an organized attack that would leave the enemy uncoordinated and cut off from aid. You oversaw the preparations and offered your opinions on the strategy. When the clashing of swords and spears fell to silence, followed by the cheering of disfavored scouts, you were the least surprised. Oh, so we weren't just part of the battle, we actually helped with the strategy. That is very interesting, and I like it. And we have a few options, but the one I'm inclined to go with is the inside agent. Turn people in the city to our side should help us neutralize. Let's get in there with minimal losses. And that's what we're going to do. With the border garrison captured by your disfavored allies, you traveled ahead of Kairos' armies and lurked in the shadows of the bastard city. You decided that converting one of the locals to Kairos' side would help bring the city to its knees. After all, corruption starts from within. Nice. Came to an arrangement with a well-connected smuggler who knew how to 